So it occurred to me that there are some options here with this idea. And I'm going to show them here by erasing this diode here. And completing the circuit like so. Let me see here. Hold on. Now what you have happening here is you still have isolation from this. Um, just making sure you can see the mouse. You still have isolation from this coil in its flyback because um, you know this side of the coil will become a positive when it connects with your well it's already connected to the positive of your source battery right here it's connected so it's already receiving positive potential this side of the coil and this side of the coil will, will receive negative potential once the gate closes the gate of the transistor when this channel is closed like so then it allows current to flow through the coil, through this channel, to the negative of the battery, same battery, thereby giving a plus and a minus to each side of the coil, and giving a charge. But when the gate opens as it is now, that charge has to go somewhere, that flyback, and it's going to reverse polarity now. This plus that used to be here will now become a negative. Okay? So it's now a negative. This side of the coil is now a negative because it's flying back and the gates open and the other side of the coil is a positive right here and that goes for all four coils but this this coil without the chances without the diode on it when it flies back as you can see without the diode the gates open so it's got nowhere to go it can't go up here because it's a diode too much impede, uh, resistance, so the current will rather go somewhere else. And where will it go? It will go out this way through the high voltage diode. So what I'm trying to say here is, you can get away with this circuit without having a diode, and it will still operate the same as if it would have a diode. The only thing that will change is there'll be less of a voltage drop across this inductor than these other three. So these other three uh, inductors will re will have a uh, instead of receiving 12 volts, they're only going to get 11 because the diode, or let's say 10 and a half, because the diode doesn't allow it through. So I don't know if you want to experiment and the, the diode has some resistance to it. So it creates a voltage drop. Um, so if you want to uh, experiment without putting a diode here, you can. And you can also, I believe, remove this diode as well on the same channel doesn't have to be there for this to operate so this circuit will work also and you'll have four inductors receiving charge without the flyback feeding into the other coils now of course when this becomes a negative and this becomes a positive during the flyback event, keeping in mind it's a positive when it's uh, being given charge from forward energy from the battery, and you, you open the switch again and then it, the charge drops on the coil, flies back in the reverse polarity into this negative here. And this negative has to go somewhere. It has, basically this negative is trying to reach this positive. And this positive is trying to reach this negative, whichever way you want to think of it. Okay. And actually, I think the two potentials are heading towards each other simultaneously through a vibratorial effect, like a wave. Um, so in, in a three-phase alternating generator, the, 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 uh, the higher potential of the AC signal is the north field. It's the north magnet that's passing over the two arms of the coil. You have a north and a south field passing over the two arms of a, of a circular coil, and the north field 
is creating the positive side of the AC sine wave of that magnet. And then the second magnet, its, it's south field, is what is generating the bottom half of the AC sine wave. So that's something to think about. But anyway, this plus is the north now. Before the north was here, because you gave it the north. You gave it plus. This is DC, but nonetheless, it's the same thing with AC. The north is, is the higher potential. So this uh, flyback plus here has to go through now, in order for this plus to meet the negative here, okay, it has to go, it can't go back through the inductor. It has to go out the other way. And it goes through the battery, through the battery, okay? If this is the force charge circuit, which it's not. Um, and the force charge circuit looks like this. Um, Bettini, he removes the this part of the circuit. This is what the force charge circuit looks like. I'm gonna, oops, that can stay. So, and, yeah, it was right here, he had a, uh, the diode facing this way. And... Right, and that's what happened. Right, he took this out. Uh-huh. And, um... Used the ground. Common ground. So I believe that's what he did. <clears throat> That's the force. Oops, did I mess that up? It's negative. Give me one second here. There it is. Let me confirm this uh, circuit again. <laughs> right, the negative there. And that's right. Right, okay, yeah. Um, Right here, he had the uh, connection. Like so, to this negative. And that was how the force charge system works. And that's all that is. And what that does is when this flyback event becomes a negative here, remember you gave it a positive here, but then you opened up the gate, the charge dropped, the flyback occurred, the poles flipped, this, this positive became a negative, and this negative became a positive. The reason this became a negative is because when the gate closed, it connects to ground, which then connects to this negative. So then this negative becomes a positive. And how does this positive reach the negative through all this circuitry? It goes down this channel, through the battery, through the negative terminal of the battery. I'm talking about this positive now. And it can go through this diode. Okay, positive, positive flyback. So as it flows through the battery, it charges the charge battery, same, same time. And then it goes through the ground, back up the ground. And that's the positive flyback. And it hits the negative right there. And that's how this positive connects to this negative through the battery. So, so this positive has to go through the circuit, which whatever's in the circuit is the batteries. And that's the thing there, you know. So I think, you know, it's just a, a pressure force from both sides, positive and negative, pushing through the entire circuit. So then again, this negative is, is, is going, you know, its course, its pressure wave is going through the battery to reach it, the other side of, or the positive. This negative has to meet the positive, and this positive has to meet the negative. So this positive goes through the, uh, well, I'll take it back. You're going to need that high voltage diode here. Because you don't want the positive bouncing back the other way, right? So I made a mistake there. This has to stay. And that diode has to stay there. So it keeps so that positive will pass through. 
cause your flyback will pass through this diode into here. Hit the positive terminal of the charge battery. And then this negative has to meet this negative of the charge battery in order for charge to occur on this battery. The only way it's going to get there is through the primary batteries and its uh, plates and its uh, chemical electrolyte in there. It's going to flow through there, up through here, down the ground, back up the ground, and uh, do the you know negative. Uh, you know, some say current only flows in one direction. Well, in this case, somehow the south pole of a magnet, being the bottom half of the AC sine wave, is the south field of an AC generator. Uh, uh, um, so the north field is the top half of that sine wave. So somehow the south field passes through the rectifier, the full wave rectifier. Either, either either it doesn't or only the positive passes through but it still meets the negative on the other end somehow. So either way you want to look at it. Either the negative is, is flowing through this circuit, including the two batteries, or the positive is flowing through it to the other end, including you know both batteries, to meet the negative. Either way, they got to connect. The negative and the positive has to connect. For charge to occur. I mean, it had to connect. You had to connect this positive from the battery to this coil and this other side of the coil. You had to connect it to negative through the gates of the transistor just to give it charge. Because it's grounded here and it's grounded here and there's your negative. By closing this gate, you give this side a negative and now the coil charges. You open the gate, the coil then loses charge, it flies back in the opposite of their polarity, as shown here in the green circles. So, in theory, this negative cannot flow through a positive. But this positive can flow through, uh, I take that back, I'm getting into uh, uh, an area here that's just going to raise controversy, but for the battery to receive charge now from the flyback, it has to be touching the negative and the positive of this flyback on this coil. So this positive will touch the positive terminal of this battery by passing through here in this diode. Now we got to think about how does this negative meet this side of the battery? Well, it meets it through here. Anybody wants to argue this with me, go right ahead. But it meets it through here, and this channel right here, and I'm just, you know, I don't see any other way to force charge the primary. Or well, for this circuit, if it works, and I'm pretty sure it does. And seeing that it does work, it proves that the negative has, <clears throat> it flows. Either it flows or it vibrates through the battery. Positive flows, they both flow. Neither flows without the other. There's no vibration without... In, in a sense, this is really a positive, okay? It's just a lesser positive. You know? There's really no negatives. There's just a lesser positive. We call it a negative because it makes it easier to think. So this is a positive, you know, 12 volts, and this is a positive 5 volts, which you would call a negative. How is the south field of a magnet supposed to create bottom half of a sine wave, you know, this is where the south magnet of the, of the, of the uh, alternating generator, see the north makes that part of the wave and the south makes this part of the wave. What's in here? Absolutely nothing. I mean, that's inside the duty cycle. That's otherwise known as current. I guess you would call that negative current. All right, folks, that's it for today. I just wanted to throw that in there that this diode does not have to be here for this to work. Not having it there would allow more current to flow through this inductor. You do need to keep this diode here. Um, and also not having a diode here, you can add, use the trigger, put the trigger winding on this uh, on this uh, core. It's four core, four core. Yeah. And um, if you want to maintain the same strength on your fields, you can always add a few more turns to this winding here. Give it a few more turns, give it some more resistance to match the impedance on the other three. And uh, that way you can go without a diode here and just do some kind of experiment, I guess. Maybe you have a more efficient trigger, you know, there's just less of a voltage drop. There's no diode here creating 1.5 volt diminishing on your source, turning this 12 into 10.5. Right. Thanks for listening.